And then I'm also, this is, this is going to take me longer to explain. So hang on, I need a drink of water. My name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 27th episode of the Love in Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, August 13th, 2019, and it is another 101 degree day here in Texas. Um, it wasn't, that's not the high, that's what it is right now after 6 p.m. and it is so hot. I was just outside taking some whip pictures and I'm still recovering. So um, here's what I'm wearing today. I am wearing a Mickey Mouse t-shirt um, because my husband is in Disney World right now and I'm super jealous. And so I've been doing all of the, putting out all of the Disney things we have in our house. Like we have some kitchen towels and a toaster and you know, we just love Disney. So I thought I would wear my Mickey Mouse t-shirt. Um, he will be back by the time that this is published. It's a really quick trip and he is just getting to spend some time with his brother who is a cast member there. Um, my hair today <laughs> is, my hair is super duper straight. It is naturally this straight and today it is like extra straight. So I just went and long, it's getting really long. So it wasn't really doing anything except being super flat, so I'd figure I'd just roll with it and I went for pigtails. Don't worry, I did not wear my hair like this to work. I did a much more professional single ponytail. <laughs> not super professional, but still, you know, I'm a teacher with kids, so whatever works. Okay, so let's get into some knitting. I um, have a finished object and it is my new shawl design. It's actually the prototype for my new shawl design. So I debated whether I was gonna show you, and I think I'm gonna show you because I've been teasing you for so long and the shawl is gonna come out in about a month. So I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you. I'm not gonna explain a lot of the detail that will be saved for when it comes out and also for my love letter video when I can talk all about this design. So. Keep in mind, this is a prototype. There are gonna be some changes and the colors that I chose for this are not the colors that I have for the final design. I will show you those too. Okay, so this is a knit shawl design. It is a big old triangle. I'm holding it upside down. It is a big old triangle knit with two skeins of fingering weight yarn. It's got garter, it's got texture and color play. Um, it is a really, really easy knit. You can wear it just like a traditional triangle shawl, like that. But since it is slightly asymmetrical, you can actually take the widest point, put it over your shoulder, uh, over one shoulder, and wrap the uh, skinny point over like that and it will actually stay because I designed it that way <laughs> to be long enough. Um, so I'm not going to show you much more now. Um, don't be too upset with me because I don't want you to get this picture in your brain because this is just the mock-up. Um, the final design is really, really similar. Um, I've just made some tweaks and my testers are going to get started on it tomorrow actually. Um, so I've got the pattern just about ready for them. I need to work on it after this. Um, but I am going to be knitting alongside my testers and I'm going to be making the final version of the shawl. So for the final version, I chose instead of choosing like these very contrasting, um, a variegated and a purple and a solid, I went with some softer colors. So I've just barely started the shawl and I am, I am using long dog yarn. So this is um, a second color, long dog yarn. And this colorway is called Wild Child. And it's just a very soft, like, um, what is that called? Taupe? I don't know. <laughs> just a very soft neutral, but then it's got like softer greens and limey greens and orange and teal. 
It's really, really cool. And then the second color that I'm using also has like neon greens, except it's a pink base. I'm kind of pulling off the, here we go, because I've already wound that one. So this is the second color that I'm using. And it also has those limey greens in it. So these are actually going to blend together and be really, really soft. So I'm really excited for that. And since I had chose two really soft yarns, I also have a third color in this version. And it's just gonna be like that little pop to kind of make things, you know, just for fun. So this color was Wild Child. And this one here, this is the one that I like loved so much, this very soft pink with the neons. And this one is called First Blush. It's also Long Dog Yarn. And then the little um, green is just a mini skein and it is the colorway Evergreen. So those are all from Long Dog Yarn, but I got them at McKinney Knittery. And if you've never been to McKinney Knittery and you live in North Texas, you've got to go. It is just one of the best shops and they have so much yarn and so many beautiful colors and amazing people that work there. <laughs> um, they were helping me pick out these colors and I, okay, so I really wanted to do this color first and then I was like I want to do something totally different from my first mock-up shawl I want to do soft and then I wanted to do a third color and I picked <laughs> I picked like this lime green because I love neutrals and neon and two people were like Ooh. <laughs> So I went for a mass appeal and went with this screen, but it is turning out so, so, so beautiful. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to keep working on that. Um, like I said, this shawl pattern, it's, it's not named yet, um, but you'll hear more details about it over the next month as it gets ready to come out, I think about September 13th. Um, and what else was I gonna say? It's a two skein fingering weight optional mini if you want to throw in a third color and yeah my brain's a little dead right now I think but I can't wait to go work on this later tonight it's such an easy simple pattern um I said I wouldn't give away too many details so I'm gonna stop talking now <laughs> but it's really fun I'm really enjoying working on it and I can't wait to um for my testers to get started tomorrow and then as they start to work we, uh, I will be posting their photos on Instagram. It's not a secret design or anything. So you will be able to follow along with that. And if you are curious about um, test knitting, I'm actually gonna talk about that um, more towards the end of the podcast. So stay tuned for that. Okay, I have not really been knitting anything else because I had to finish that shawl. I gave myself a deadline and I got it done. So. I really haven't worked on much else, but I do have things to show you. So one thing that I'm not gonna show you, my um, Like a Cloud cardigan, I did knit on it, but I only knit like three rows or maybe four. Um, I brought it to, uh, with me when I went to McKinney Knittery and I spent too much time chatting and weaving in ends on my shawl and picking out yarn and going to lunch. And then I just, you know, barely did any knitting, but that's okay. So I'm not even going to show that to you because I will wait until I have done a little bit more on it. But I am going to show you my sock that I've done only a little bit on because I want to talk about a missed opportunity for knitting. So this morning, so since last week, that's where I was. I, I hadn't done anything until this morning. So this morning I did, I don't know, three quarters of an inch maybe from that little whale marker. And I did it while I was doing my morning duty at school. So <laughs> missed opportunity here. Of course, the first day of school, I was not gonna like stand in front of the kids and knit. Um, probably that whole first week wouldn't have been a good idea, but we're in week two. Kids, the kids at my school know that I knit. They know me, if they don't have me, they know me for having the knitting and crochet club. Um, I, you know, it's just a really unique position that I get to be in. And so if I am knitting in the hallway, the kids are really interested in that. They're not weirded out by it. They're curious. Um, and they're also not like, it's not like causing a bill up in the hallway because they've seen it before. Um, and socks are perfect because I have 
a little um, Aaron Lane sock bag and it has apples on it for, you know, for being a teacher and it has a belt loop. And so I just clip, or I'm sorry, it has a ribbon with a snap that I clip to my belt loop. My ball of yarn sits in there and then I can just knit on my sock like down here really. So, um, <laughs> missed opportunity. So my job in the morning at my school is to stand in the hallway, be like a hall monitor, um, but also monitor the restroom usage. I work at an elementary school and the kids, like when they come into school in the morning, they don't always want to go straight to class. They want to play around in the cafeteria, in the bathroom or anywhere that they're not seeing, you know, catch up with their friends, you know, their kids. So um, my job is to stand in the hallway, but monitor the restroom and kids have to ask me if they can go to the bathroom. <laughs> so it's really a pretty simple job and a good time for me to just stand and knit and, you know, interact with kids if they are stopping by. So I think that's what I'm going to start doing. Um, that means I will have this sock done super soon. Um, we are also one of my other, the other part of my job is a one of the testing coordinators at our school. So I am, we are starting some testing tomorrow. We'll have testing the next three days. Um, and that will involve us like getting kids set up on the computer. And then once they're set up, I'll just be um, monitoring and walking around. And so that'll be another opportunity for me to knit on the sock. And then, you know, when I have to answer a question, I'll just drop it in my bag. It's really, really, really great <laughs> knitting. So this is a, shorty sock that I am making as a Christmas gift. Um, these are, this colorway is from Malia. Malia made it and it's the shark in the water colorway. Um, and so I think I'm doing 64 stitches. I need to figure that out. 64 stitches and a fish lips kiss heel. So hopefully I'll have the second sock done next week. Now, since I had such a pathetic amount of knitting to show you, I am bringing out one of my long-term whips. And this is a scrap blanket. And I'm holding it in this bag from Lolo Did It. I really love this bag because um, it is the, it was a kit, um, I think I got it maybe last summer. and. It was, it came with yarn, it came with mini skeins, they were all Harry Potter colors, and then these are the colors on the bag. So it came with the bag, same colors as the yarn, and I have already used all of those for my Scrappy Granny project. And now I think I have little bits of them maybe left for this one. So this is my Cozy Memories blanket. So it's lap sized, it's pretty small, like literally lap sized. <laughs> um, I just want to make it big enough to like set over my lap, like not even down to the floor. Um, but we'll see. I haven't worked on it in months. Like I don't even think I've worked on it in 2018. I think I actually did this much. <laughs> so it's really not something that I'm making a priority, but I do enjoy working on it. Um, basically, if you haven't seen it before, these are just mitered squares where you will do a pickup and then double decreases down in the middle. Um, the pattern that I'm using is the coziest memory, I believe by Kimber Ray. Um, although I'm not doing the same number of stitches as she is, and I'll tell you why. So we have to go back in time a little bit. So long ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, when the cozy memory concept like first came about, um, or was very popular. I remember it being very popular when I was um, working at Bliss Yarns in Nashville, Tennessee. And that was about eight years ago. Um, seven? I don't know. <laughs> um, but we, everyone was so obsessed with it that we actually had a box at the store where you could bring in um, little like 10 or 11 yard like wind offs of your sock yarn and as many as you brought, you could take from the basket. So it was literally like an exchange. You brought in some yarn and then you got to take some yarn. So the way that they looked here is they would wind them into like little mini hanks like this. You would wrap them around your arm, take it off, twist it up, and they would be in little mini hanks. So I have still, so I started collecting yarn for this. Oops, I'm pulling stuff apart. 
I started collecting yarn for this long before I ever actually started my Cozy Memories because I didn't start this until about two years ago. A lot of progress, right? <laughs> so since I started collecting yarn so long ago, I actually had a lot. I probably had like, you know, more than 50 little wind offs of yarn from up from different people. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I had was making a square where I could use all of those yarns. So when I weighed them, they were all under three grams, like two and a half to three grams. And so I, I made sure I could make like a square as big as possible with just two grams. And that's how I came up with these little teensy little squares. So these are pretty small. These are barely two inches by two inches. And that is just because the yarns that I already had, um, you know, yarn is the yarn was limited or yardage was limited so I wanted to make sure I could use them all so I can't exactly remember I think I think it's 30 like 15 and 15 but I will if it's not 30 I'll put it um, down here once I check Ravelry um, this project is on my Ravelry page in hibernation so it's at the very very bottom so I will go check that for you guys um, but yeah these are really easy to make um, some things that I've found to make this easier, if this is a project that you're still working on, like I know the Crazy Sock Lady is making one. Hers, mine are all going the same direction. I think hers like go out from the like, quadrants. Um, but some tips I have for making this easier. Um, one is your needle choice. So where did I just put that? Okay, so I use this pattern as an excuse. Me me and a friend, myself and a friend, um, to try signature needles. So I don't know where the par pair is, the partner is to this, which is suspect, but I can only find the one. So these are signature needles, size two, 2.75, and they're the stiletto tips. So they're like super duper sharp. I mean, you can see I'm like poking into my skin. These are really, really sharp. They're seven inches long, um, which I thought would be perfect for making these tiny little squares. Now, while I, um, you might love, love, love these. I'm not really a metal needle person, so I should have known that this was gonna be a little tough for me. Um, the metal needles that I do use are like sock needles. I use the Chai Gu, and since they're circulars, they're shorter, and so they don't, um, these basically hurt my hands and like circular metal knitting needles don't hurt my hands as bad. So what I found when I was knitting with these is there's just not enough like flex the way that I hold the needle um, for these to be super comfortable for me. So after a while, I stopped using these. I don't totally dislike them. I think if you're a metal needle user, you will absolutely love um, signature needles. But what I did do is I switched to carbons and carbons are very new to me. Um, carbons are, I can't remember who makes them. I think it's Knitter's Pride. I think it's Knitter's Pride, but they are metal on the end. You can see they're not quite as sharp as those stiletto needles, but in the middle they're made from carbon. I don't know, they're kind of almost like ridgy, but they're not hard to like, they kind of have that sticking power of wood while the tips are slick because they're metal. Um, but they just have enough like flex in them for me. I know you can't even see me, like I'm not actually bending it, but there's just a difference for me between having that, a little bit of give in the middle and then like a metal rod the whole way through. That has made it more comfortable for me. So yeah, I need to get, I need to work on this every so often. Um, but I probably won't until I really feel in the mood for it. But this is just one of my little scrappy projects that I figured I would bring out and show you guys since I don't have a lot of content. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. Oh, I know, one more thing. Um, something that has helped make this a lot better is as you can see, I don't have any ends. And that is not because I am getting a darning needle and weaving them in um, as I go. I am weaving them in as I go, but I'm actually knitting over them. Um, this is probably a tutorial video I need to do at some point, um, but there is actually a technique. I don't know if you can see right here. This end has actually been knitted over, so when I'm done with the square, I'll be able to just snip it off. Um, there is a technique, actually, here we go, both of these. This end has been knitted over. 
that was from this square and then that end has been knitted over. So there is a te technique that I learned, I think I learned it on YouTube, um, when I made a scarf one time that was super stripy, it was a Doctor Who scarf, and I had to change colors like sometimes every four rows or every eight or every whatever, and it was a garter stitch scarf, so you couldn't carry the yarns because there was like nine colors and some of them spanned 20 rows. And um, I was like, I'm never gonna wanna weave in all of these ends. So I learned a technique where you can actually knit over your ends as you go. It makes your tail yarn go like this, like follow the path of the stitches. And as long as you're not using um, something super slick, it works really, really well. Um, so if I can find that tutorial, I will link it for you. And then one day I hope to have um, my own tutorial for this because it is a super good technique. I use it all the time. Um, but yeah, I am able to weave over my ends as I knit this. So I think I do the pickup row. If you've made this before, I think I do the pickup row and then come back across, right? A wrong side row. And then as I do the first, oh, I know what I do. I should have thought this through better before I started explaining it. As I pick up the first row, I actually weave over the end from the square before finish the pickup row, knit back across. As I knit the second row, I weave over the end from the new color. Yes? <laughs> Somehow that works. I don't know. Works pretty well. So that's what I have been doing <laughs> when I have been making my Cozy Memories blanket. So if you're still working on a Cozy Memories blanket, let me know that I'm not alone <laughs> because <laughs> It's probably gonna be another five years or so before I ever get that thing done. In all of my rambling, I totally forgot to show you how I store my scraps. Um, so when I finish something, um, I kind of have a system. So if it's, most of the things I make are fingering weight. So when I finish a fingering weight um, plied yarn and not a single ply, I will do the following. I'll weigh it and if it's more than like 60 grams, I actually put it back up here behind the hanks because I can totally use it in another full project or full pair of socks. If it's less than 50 grams, it goes, I have a trunk, um, a little cute trunk on a dresser in my yarn room and that houses my granny stripe blanket. Um, and so if it's under 50 grams, it goes in there. Um, sometimes I'll actually pull out that those yarns to do contrasting heels and toes for um, socks but anything between 20 and 50 goes into the granny stripe uh, trunk, so I can use it for my granny stripe blanket. Now, once it gets to be under like 15 grams, um, that's where it goes to my cozy memories blanket. So I got this awesome glass container at Hobby Lobby probably either 40 or 50% off because you should never buy anything from Hobby Lobby unless it's 40 or 50% off. But I got this um, last year. Ugh, it's heavy. It's got, it's like a giant decanter almost. I think it was labeled as a decanter. It was before I just brought it over here. It was so dusty. So showing it here gave me a really good excuse to clean it. Now it's all shiny and it looks nice, but I'm gonna set it down. Oh. But it's just a really pretty way to like store yarn, but also display it as something nice. Um, so it just sits on the dresser next to the trunk with the granny stripe blanket yarn. And when I'm done with the project and I weigh it, if it doesn't go back here, then it goes in one of those two spots and I can just drop it in there and I don't even have to think about it. So I'm hoping that my days are gone of like hanging on to little bits of yarn with no intention. Now they just get sorted by weight and maybe one day we'll grow up into being a scrappy blanket. All right, so now I just have some announcements about things going on in the Love and Stitches world. Um, so the first thing is I've been saying it for like the past few episodes, but I promise I have a new video tutorial series coming. Um, and it is going to be a basic knit and a basic crochet series. So I'm doing this for two reasons. One is for my students. Um, in a couple weeks, maybe a few weeks, I'll be starting my knit and crochet clubs. Um, and I wanna have 
a video tutorial resource for them that is matching what I'm telling them at our club. Um, and so I want to like be able to send them somewhere when they get home that they can like look at and say, oh yeah, this is the language that was being used. This is the, how she was showing me and just really like hit that repetitiveness um, for them. So that's one reason. Um, the other is I know that it's not just kids that need um, the basics sometimes. So these are gonna be really great um, to have out there as a resource. I am There's so many already out there, but it'll give me something that I can link in my own patterns that I know um, that people like that I know that are, this is so, this is so bad. I want to say that I know that are good. There's so many that I know that are good, but like the credibility is there, I guess, since you already bought my pattern and then here's my video. That's what I want to say. <laughs> I'm really a mess today. I felt like, um, so that video series, air conditioning keeps blowing my hair into my mouth. That video series will be starting on Tuesday. That is my plan. And I'm going to get recording on that right after this. I thought I was going to last week, but this time I totally mean it. And I've told you so that really motivates me to actually do it. Um, okay, so that's a new video series. I am also um, going to open up a new thread on my Ravelry group, which is Love and Stitches. And that thread is going to be a, an ask me thread. So kind of segueing off of the tutorial videos, um, I want to do an ask me thread because I know that I can't ever get to like all the tutorial ideas that I have. Um, but I do have this podcast platform where I can answer like quick questions. I can't, I'm not going to turn the camera around and show my hands, but if you have questions ever about like, um, you know, just, just things about like, how do you choose a color for this? Or like, how do you do this part of the sock? It is something I can explain here on the podcast. That's what that ask me is for. It is also for if you want to ask other questions, like um, questions about me or like knitting related or not. And um, within reason, I will answer those on the podcast. So ask me is going to be a new thread. It'll be locked at the top. Um, of the forums in the Ravelry group, Love and Stitches. And again, you can go in there to ask um, like practical um, application questions about <laughs> knitting and crochet that I can answer on the podcast. Um, I guess if you have suggestions for tutorials, you could ask me there too. If it's like a complicated thing, I'll say, I can't answer this here or on the podcast. So maybe one day I can do a tutorial. And then you can ask me um, like fun, personal questions as well. And then I'm also, this is, this is gonna take me longer to explain. So hang on, I need a drink of water. So I am changing the way that I gather knitting and crochet test testers. <laughs> I was going to say test knitters, um, how I get my test knitters and test crocheters. So if that is something that interests you, keep on listening. I'm going to explain how I'm going to do it and I am going to explain why I'm changing it. So when I first started testing only, I mean, only a year ago, I started designing. I would put out testing calls on Instagram. And then once I had done that for a while, I felt like I had found a base group. Um, and so I put out a call for like just an application to be in my tester pool and then I closed it. So for a long, for, I don't know, over six months, maybe seven or eight months, I've had a closed tester pool of knitters and then crocheters I think I got more recently, maybe five months ago. And it's been a closed, it, I, I opened the application, selected 50, 15 to 20 people and then closed it. And so I haven't been taking on any new testers. And so that's been working for me. I really don't have a, an issue um, or I am still, these test testers are amazing and they're still um, responding and they're still testing and they're doing a wonderful job. But what I wanted to change was I am not getting anyone new like cycling through. Um, so I'm actually gonna go back to putting testing applications on Instagram and opening them up. 
So um, I hope that is exciting news for you if you're interested in testing. Um, I am not by any means saying goodbye to any of my previous testers. Um, they already know this. I sent them an email before I put it on here because I didn't want them to hear this and go, what? She's breaking up with me. That's not what I'm doing. Um, I just want to get it a little more fluid where I can have um, new people coming in and then the people that have tested for me for a while, if they need a break, they don't have to con like reply no, they can just not apply. And it's not, you know, it's not a big commitment um, every time. It's just when you're ready to drop in, you have that opportunity. So this is how it's going to work and I am still fleshing it out, but this is the general um, idea. It's really similar to how a lot of people are doing it. But I, when I am ready for testers, I will put up a picture either of the actual test or the yarn and say, I need testers for this. Here's, here are some of the details. Um, and then it'll say, go to the link in my bio for an application. So each of the tests will have their own application. They will not be super long. Um, they will basically have some of the details of that um, specific test. And then if there are like different um, options, like for my Lusuoso scarf, I really wanted to have somebody knit the longer version and the shorter version. And then there was a, two other versions in there. So it'll kind of have you choose like, would you want to do this or that? Like, you know, I haven't fleshed that out yet. It'll be different for every test, but there'll be some sort of Google form um, that you'll fill out. And then you'll also go through every time you'll go through each of my um, kind of requirements for being a tester. Um, is your Instagram profile public? Um, do you have a Ravelry account um, to post your photos on Ravelry? Uh, putting, putting your like social media in there. Um, just some of those basic things. That's what's gonna be on there. And then I'll give a date range and I'll close it. And then I will go through and select um, testers from there. So some of the things that I am really looking for um, as we go into like new testing, <laughs> new testing policy is I'm really looking for um, people that are taking good photos of their knitting. And by that, I don't mean like you're a professional photographer. I just mean that you get out in the natural sunlight and put some effort into taking like a, a good photo. Um, you, yeah, you don't like, I don't know. I don't want to say anything rude. So I don't know, like, you know, I wouldn't put my um, beautiful sweater on and then stand like in front of the trash can, right? <laughs> I don't know. So just, you know, some, some people who put some effort into their photos and really um, make their knitting look beautiful because that's what I'm asking you to do is make um, something that I've worked really hard on look beautiful. And I know that everyone out there has the knitting capability to do it. And I want people who also can showcase it. So those are just some of the things. I'll put more details out there um, when I have a new test. Um, the shawl that I have is um, already with testers. My sweet testing group, I said, hey guys, this is the last time that I'm emailing just you. So if you want to test, um, let me know. So they are going to be starting on that tomorrow, working super hard, and they're going to do a wonderful job. And I'm excited for the next test because I'll get to um, see some new faces. So that'll be really, really exciting. Okay, let's talk about life. So it's the second week of school. I can probably stop talking about that now because things just get rolling from here. But um, I wanted to update you on Carline <laughs> because I talked last episode about the first day of school, Carline, and how just rough that can be. And it has gotten so much better. The, the very next day, we um, our administration was super responsive and they gathered up or they um, I think they met with each of the teachers during their planning period. They also gathered up um, the people who are responsible for sort of running the car line and asked them how would they could improve it and then relayed those messages to teachers. So our after our first day of really d difficult car line, our second day was amazing and super smooth um, and fast. 
and since then it's been really good. So if you can power through the first day, probably the first week of Carline, um, if that's the way you wanna pick your kids up, don't give up on it. They will get better and things will run smoother. And then also I wanted to share some school supplies that I got. When I was um, in elementary school, I remember getting more excited for my school supplies list than really school starting because I loved buying school supplies and using school supplies. And while I don't get as many things now, I still get really excited to get some new stuff um, for my classroom. So I got a new set of pins and I am so excited. So these are Papermate flare pins. I believe they're the medium point. Um, yeah, medium tip. They are felt tip pins. So essentially they are markers, I guess. Somebody's, somebody's gonna say no, a pen and a marker are different. So maybe they're different, I don't know. Um, but I absolutely love these pens. They're my absolute favorite to write with. So as someone who doesn't have like particularly neat handwriting, um, these pens are like have a lot of drag on them. So some people like that and some people don't. But for me, it really helps me control um, my writing and make it look a lot nicer. And I really, really like that. Also, the thickness of the pen is just right for my hands. I ha have a hard time gripping like a, a Bic, like ballpoint pen that's really skinny. This doesn't feel right in my hands. <laughs> I can do sock needles, but I can't do normal pens, okay? <laughs> but these are really great just because they have that, you know, they're tapered here, they're skinny here, probably like a normal pen, but they're kind of fatter where you actually hold on to them. So I am super excited to have this new pack of pens. Our um, school was kind enough to have, like give us a little bit of money at the beginning of the year. So I got some pins for my office supplies, post-it notes, Sharpies, but then I also got black ones too because I use these black pins all the time to like label manila folders and I don't know, like if I ever have to write up something to be copied, these are really good because they make really nice thick lines and when you copy something, it still turns out really nice. Whereas if you copy something you wrote in ballpoint pen, it is really faded. So I really, really love these pens. Maybe some of you have a favorite pen too, but um, I'd love to know what like your favorite school supplies are. If you still have school supplies that you get even though you're not in school anymore. I can't seem to stop loving school supplies. But I think that is everything for this week. So thank you so much for watching and listening to my rambling. I literally feel like I'm going cross-eyed right now. Maybe I need to go sit on the couch and knit for a little bit. But thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.